I never imagined my life would turn out like this. Growing up in a small town, I always dreamed of something more. But not like this. Not at the cost of my freedom. I need this, Emma. Think about the family, my mother pleaded. Her eyes glossed with a mix of desperation and what she thought was hope. The Harrington mansion loomed in the background, a stark contrast to our modest family home. But I don't love him, Mom. I don't even know him, I argued, feeling the weight of the situation. You'll learn to love him. This is about securing our future, yours included, my father interjected, his tone final. The wedding was a blur, a lavish affair that felt more like a business transaction than a celebration of love. Mr. Harrington stood beside me, his smile practiced and perfect, but his eyes were cold, void of the warmth I yearned for. You look beautiful, my dear, Mr. Harrington whispered as we posed for photos, his hand uncomfortably tight on my waist. Thank you, Mr. Harrington, I replied, forcing a smile, feeling the heavy fabric of my dress and the heavier reality of my situation. The early days of marriage were a theatrical performance. Mr. Harrington was the perfect husband in public, attentive, charming, generous. But behind closed doors, it was a different story. Emma, I expect dinner to be ready when I get home. And don't think about leaving the house without my permission, he said one evening, his voice laced with a warning. But I need to see my friends to get out sometimes, I protested, feeling the walls of the mansion closing in on me. Your place is here, with me. Your friends can wait. He dismissed my concerns with a wave of his hand, and that was the end of the conversation. I started to feel like a bird in a gilded cage, cherished for its beauty but never allowed to fly. That's when I knew I had to plan my escape. I began documenting everything, his strict rules, the isolation, the subtle threats. One night, as Mr. Harrington was out at yet another business dinner, I sat in the vast, empty living room, my journal open in front of me. Emma, darling, you're up late he said upon returning, eyeing the journal with a hint of suspicion. Just writing down some thoughts before bed, I replied quickly, closing the journal. I prefer you to sleep when I'm not home. It's not safe for you to be wandering around this big house all alone, he said, though his concern felt more controlling than protective. I understand. I'll make sure to go to bed earlier, I assured him, my mind racing with thoughts of how I would use these notes to free myself from this golden prison. Every day felt like a strategic game, a balancing act between appeasing Mr. Harrington and laying the groundwork for my departure. I knew I couldn't rush, that every step had to be carefully planned and executed. But with each passing day, my resolve strengthened. I was determined to reclaim my life, no matter the cost. Life with Mr. Harrington was a constant game of chess, and I was learning to play. Each day, I woke up with a facade of the dutiful wife while secretly gathering evidence of his controlling behavior. One evening, as Mr. Harrington was fixated on his business calls, I whispered into my hidden recorder, He insists I seek his permission even to visit my own parents. He tracks my every move. As I navigated the sprawling mansion, I slowly befriended the house staff. Maria, the cook, was the first to open up. In the kitchen, while helping her with dinner preparations, our conversations grew more personal. You know, Emma, this house wasn't always this quiet. Mr. Harrington used to have a lot of questionable visitors, Maria shared one day, her eyes darting around to ensure we were alone. What kind of visitors? I probed. My interest piqued. Let's just say not the kind you'd invite for a family dinner, she replied with a knowing look. This information was a goldmine. I started keeping a discreet record of the names Maria mentioned and the odd hours they visited. Simultaneously, I embarked on a journey towards financial independence. Hidden away in my room, I took online courses in digital marketing and web design. Night after night, I stayed up, learning and building a small online business, selling handmade jewelry. It was a slow start, but each sale felt like a victory, a step towards freedom. As my plan progressed, I knew I needed an exit strategy. Carefully, I mapped out my escape, considering every possible scenario. I'll need a place to stay, enough money to sustain myself and all the evidence securely backed up, I muttered to myself, scrutinizing my meticulously crafted plan. One day, as I was updating my escape plan, Mr. Harrington entered the room unexpectedly. What are you working on so diligently? He asked, his voice tinged with curiosity. 
Just some designs for new jewelry pieces, I lied smoothly, quickly minimizing the documents on my laptop. He glanced at the screen briefly and nodded. I'm glad you're finding hobbies to keep yourself busy. The day of my planned escape was approaching, and the tension was palpable. I could feel the walls of the mansion closing in on me, but I also sensed the looming freedom. It's now or never. I whispered to my reflection in the mirror, a determined glint in my eyes. Every move, every decision, was leading me to this moment. I was ready to reclaim my life, to break free from the chains of this loveless, controlling marriage. The game of chess was nearing its end, and I was determined to emerge victorious. The night of my escape was cloaked in a tense silence. My heart pounded in my chest as I meticulously went through my checklist. The evidence audio recordings, my journal, the documents Maria helped me gather about Mr. Harrington's shady visitors, was securely stored on a flash drive in my purse. My savings from the online business, though modest, were enough to get me started. I dressed quietly, choosing practical clothes and shoes I could run in if needed. Everything's set. This is it, Emma, I whispered to myself, a mix of fear and exhilaration coursing through me. I tiptoed down the grand staircase, each step feeling like a move towards liberation. The house was eerily quiet, the only sound being the soft ticking of the antique clock in the hallway. As I reached the front door, I paused, taking a deep breath. Freedom, I thought. And with one swift movement, I opened the door and stepped into the cool night air. The following days were a whirlwind. I found a small apartment in the city and filed for divorce, armed with my evidence. The legal process was daunting, but I was determined to see it through. When the media caught wind of my story, it spread like wildfire. Young woman escapes controlling marriage to wealthy older man, the headline screamed. In the lawyer's office, I sat across from Mr. Harrington's legal team, my hands steady despite the turmoil inside. Mrs. Harrington, are you aware of the implications of your actions? One of his lawyers asked, his tone patronizing. I am fully aware, and it's miss, not missus, I replied firmly, meeting his gaze without flinching. The public's reaction to my story was overwhelming. Messages of support flooded in, and I realized how many people resonated with my plight. Women shared their own stories of being trapped in controlling relationships, thanking me for speaking out. As the legal battle continued, Mr. Harrington's reputation began to crumble. His business dealings were scrutinized, and those mysterious visitors Maria had mentioned were now of interest to the authorities. Sitting in the packed courtroom, I felt a sense of power. For the first time, I was in control. I was no longer the trapped bird in a gilded cage, but a woman fighting for her freedom and dignity. Miss, can you confirm these recordings are of your husband? The lawyer asked, playing a clip of Mr. Harrington demanding I ask for permission to leave the house. Yes, that's his voice, I answered, my voice steady. The jury's eyes were fixed on me, some with sympathy, others with curiosity. But all that mattered was the truth, my truth, finally being heard. As the trial progressed, I felt a weight lifting off my shoulders. With each piece of evidence presented, each testimony given, I was a step closer to closing this painful chapter of my life. The day the divorce was finalized felt surreal. Walking out of the courthouse, I was greeted by a crowd of supporters and reporters. Emma, how does it feel to be free? A reporter asked, thrusting a microphone in my face. It feels like the beginning, I said, a smile breaking through. The beginning of a new life, on my terms. As I walked away, leaving the courthouse and my old life behind. I knew this was more than just a personal victory. It was a statement, a beacon of hope for others in similar situations. I had escaped, I had fought, and I had triumphed. And now, it was time to start anew. The day I received the divorce settlement felt like a new dawn. Sitting in my lawyer's office, I heard the words that marked the beginning of my true independence. Emma, the settlement is substantial. You've won more than just the case. You've won your life back, my lawyer said, a smile of genuine happiness on his face. Holding the settlement papers, a sense of surreal accomplishment washed over me. I did it. I really did it, I murmured, my heart swelling with a mix of relief and pride. But this victory wasn't just about the money. It was about justice, about reclaiming my identity and my future. As I left the office, I knew exactly what I wanted to do next. 
The first time Mr. Harrington reached out for reconciliation, it was through a carefully worded letter. I remember sitting in my new, modest apartment, reading his words of apology and pleas for forgiveness. Emma, I realize now the error of my ways. Please, let's meet and talk about this. I'm willing to make amends, the letter read. I felt a surge of emotions, anger, disbelief, and then a calm resolve. This was the man who had tried to control my every move, and now he sought forgiveness. No, there was no room for reconciliation. I penned a response, each word deliberate and clear. Your apologies come too late, Mr. Harrington. I've moved on, and I suggest you do the same. Sending that letter was empowering. It was my final goodbye to a past that no longer defined me. With the settlement, I founded a non-profit organization dedicated to helping victims of forced marriages. I wanted to use my experience, my journey, to empower others in similar situations. Welcome to Freedom Wings Foundation. We're here to help, I said to the first woman who walked through our doors, her eyes filled with a mix of fear and hope. The foundation grew, as did my small business. I poured my heart into both, finding a sense of purpose and fulfillment I never knew I needed. One evening, as I sat in my office, reflecting on the journey, a young intern, Lily, approached me. Emma, can I ask you something? Of course, Lily. What is it? How did you find the strength to start over? To fight back? She asked, her voice tinged with her own struggles. I paused, thinking back to the countless nights of planning, the fear, the determination. I realized that the only way out was through. I had to be my own hero, write my own story. Lily nodded, a look of understanding dawning on her face. As I watched her walk away, a sense of peace settled over me. My story had come full circle, from a victim to a survivor, and now a mentor. I realized then that my journey wasn't just about escaping Mr. Harrington or winning a legal battle. It was about finding my voice, my strength. It was about showing others that they too could rise from their ashes. Sitting at my desk, I looked out the window, the city lights twinkling like stars in the night sky. I had faced my darkest hour, and emerged into the light. My past no longer haunted me. It fueled me. I was Emma, no longer defined by my struggles, but by my triumphs, my resilience. This is just the beginning, I whispered to myself, a smile playing on my lips. The future was bright, and it was mine for the taking. Now that Emma's story of triumph and resilience has come to a close, here's a thought-provoking question for you. Do you believe that people like Mr. Harrington can truly change and deserve a second chance? Or is some behavior simply unforgivable? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments. Your perspective is valuable, and we love to see a lively discussion. And if you enjoyed this story and want to be part of more incredible journeys, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Your support keeps these stories coming. Thank you for watching.